Okay, so welcome back to the little series that I'm making about computer architecture and how CPUs actually operate. This video is going to be how I made the most optimal GPU or seven segment driver possible. So it only takes 39 transistors to make and it uses the most minimal logic gates that I could configure it. So in this video, I'm going to explain what a seven segment display is how I made the logic circuit for it and the implications that we'll be using this driver for in our CPU in order for it to act like a basic GPU or graphic processing unit. So let's get into it. So what exactly is a seven segment display? This is my DC power supply that I use to power my circuits and it uses seven segment displays to display to the user the amount of volts, amps, and wattage that your circuit uses. So these displays, like the name suggests, have seven segments, which allow it to display any of the 10 numerical digits that we use. And the way these displays work is each segment has a letter correlation to it to allow the user or the designer to control which LED under which segment lights up to display the various different numbers that are possible. So now let's look at a little circuit that I made to really see how we can control each segment to make different Perfect. numbers. My A on this seven segment display is burnt out. I burnt it out so it won't work, but all the other segments work. So. We can control which one we have on. So we turn them all on. Yeah. So when we turn them all on, we can control which number that we want to show. Let's see if we get the number four up. There we go. Just like that. So pretty basic how it works. The main problem with this though is that it takes seven inputs to control which number is displayed. But in a computer, we have four inputs that control what binary output is displayed. So we need a circuit that can convert four binary outputs into seven outputs to display a numeric numerical digit so the user can easily identify what the number is without having to translate it from binary to our base 10 system. So now let's go to our logic simulation to discuss how we can make this four bit binary output into a seven bit output to control this display. So before we can talk about how the logic gates make the seven segment display, let's first go over this truth table real quick. So this is a screenshot of the truth table that I made in Google Sheets. And it basically tells us what the four bit inputs should equal as a seven segment outputs. So for example, when the four bit inputs equal zero, so A is zero, B is zero, C is zero, and D is zero, the seven segment outputs should equal a zero, which is everything is on except G, which is what the truth table shows us. And the same thing when the binary input is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then they correlate to what segments on the display should be on to show the digit that we want to display. And this truth table basically just helps us visualize what numbers have what pins on the seven segment display in common. So we can allow the logic gates that we're about to see be the most optimized possible so that's it i just want to show this little spreadsheet that i made real quick to help our understanding of this in the next segment of the video okay so now that we're back in the simulation let's see how we can actually design a circuit to drive this seven segment display. So 
Most of the ones on the market, like the little IC chips that we're about to discuss after this logic, will have a circuit similar to this. And that is, you not all the inputs, and then you have all the inputs normal, and you kind of just and them all together. So for example, if all the inputs are off, meaning all their inverses are high, this AND gate gets lit up, and we signify that it's a zero, and we just turn on all the pins that correlate to zero with this massive OR gate chain. And if it's one, then the one AND is gonna light up because we have it hooked up to um, input A, and then all the inverses of D, C, and B, which would only let the four AND gate of the one go, and then we light up the OR gates that correlate with one. And we do the same thing with two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then the other inputs just don't exist. So the benefit of this is it's very simple. It's very simple to understand um, and implement, but it uses 111 transistors. It's very inefficient, especially if you want to make this from scratch, it's almost impractical. And a lot of the logic when you make these seven segment displays, they kind of overlap. For example, one and seven only have one LED difference. So you can overlap these two by quite a bit um, and just take care of this other function with this one other LED. And so we can optimize this to make this even better. So let's go to the more optimized one. So this one right here only takes 39 transistors. It's very practical to make if you wanna make your own transistor-based CPU. And the way it works is all the numbers that overlap, we share um, logic gates with in order to conserve on them. So let's bear with me for a second as I explain this. So when one is on, and I labeled all of these to make it easier for me to understand. So this OR gate right here, if this OR gate is high, it means it has to be a one, a two, a three, a five, a six, a seven, or a nine. Because if it's a four, this OR gate will not be high. So we know through process of elimination what the numbers can be, okay? So this NOR gate then feeds into this NAND gate. So, and this NAND gate is hooked up to this NOR gate. So this NOR gate up here, if it's on, if it's high, it has to be a zero, a one, a two, or a three, since they don't affect this NOR gate. And then this OR gate has to be a one, two, three, whatever. So we hook this up to this NAND gate, since the one, the two, and the three both overlap for each of them, they kind of cancel each other out. So then we're left with this output that's either a zero, a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we can feed that directly into F because F is only low if it's a one, two, or three. Everything else, it's high. And I do the same thing with all the logic for all the other inputs. So the creator of this program, he made his own GPU or seven segment driver. And he actually made his own program to solve for the logic for it. And it's incredible. And his is also pretty concise, but it takes 52 transistors because he uses three XOR gates. And XOR gates takes seven to eight transistors to make, so they're very impractical to actually use. Now, I wanna talk about this super XOR gate for a little bit. So this is my own personal design. And then if we view it, it's just an XOR gate with these four NAND chips. But if you remember, they give us this XOR output, and they also give us this NAND output, which we can use as an AND gate to conserve on transistor count. So instead of making this design every time I want to make one, I just made it into one chip. And then we had this other input right here, just in case I need to use it, but I did not need to use it for this circuit. So we're just going to completely ignore it. But 
it pretty much tells us if A is on and B is off. So if this one's on and this one's off, then it will let us know. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll, we'll go over a few more, but I don't want to be too redundant. If you want to see how this works, just pause the video and then you can read all of my little labels on it. But every time you make a circuit, just label what each of the gates do and it will help you, especially for this complex of a circuit right here. So, um, let's go with, let's go with E. So, if you remember from the truth table, E will be on if it's anything but a, a 0, 2, 6, or 8. Or if it's a 0, 2, 6, or 8, it's going to be on. Okay, my bad. Um, so, pretty much if the number is even. So, what controls what if the number is even is really the first input. So, that's why we have a direct line from this first input into the gate. But... If it's four, it's off. Four is the only even number where if it's four, it's off. So we have to take this little four circuit I have right here and feed it into the NOR gate so when it's four, it's off. And the four circuit is made because of input A when it's a four, input A is this top one. So only four and one, the only two numbers where A is off. So I have this circuit up here, which is high for every number but one and four. And one and four share this very unique um, combination to where either this input is on or this input is on, but they both cannot be on. And these two inputs are off. So that's why we have to XOR these two and then we NOR the top two to give us if it's one or four. So that's pretty much how it works. I'll show y'all, I guess, a demo of it all the uh, digits okay so seven is unique so seven it does have this little hook right here which I don't mind it but in order to take this hook out it would took substantially probably like three more logic gates and I really didn't want to implement that so I just stuck with it and I don't think it's that bad so we're gonna keep it and then eight and nine and then the other numbers, which is interesting, since the logic is so condensed that if we have a number like 10 or 12, it just shows, it shows other digits that we already made. But yeah, that's how this works. So this is an optimization of logic gates. So now if we go back into the library and open this one, which I made three of these, this one is an optimization of little IC logic gate chips. So this one takes about, this one's 20 gates, okay? And then each gate has four chips on it. So that would be five IC chips in order to make this. So if you were making a, let's say a transistor computer with these IC um, logic gate chips, instead you would need five of them in order to make this. I don't want to try to optimize for it. That's why we have four XOR gates because if you buy one XOR IC chip, there's gonna come with four on them. So I figured I might as well use them. And again, it works. So, and the seven still has a little hook on it. So I just want to kind of show this out here too. If you want to see the logic for it, you can. Um, there's multiple ways to make this chip. So it's actually kind of fun to make it. It's like a little puzzle. But yeah, so let's look at um, a real example now of a real life circuit of the seven segment driver and how it actually works using one of the pre-built seven segment IC chips, not actual transistors since I didn't want to build that. So this is a real life example of how a seven segment driver works in real life. So my seven segment display does not work with this driver, it's not compatible. So we're gonna represent each segment with these LEDs. So right now, a zero is being displayed since all the binary inputs are off. So all the LEDs are on, but one, which is this one right here. And then if we make a one happen, 
then we have two LEDs are on. If we make put a three on, then the three comes on, and so on. So if we have eight, all of them should be on. And all of them are on. So that's how this works in real life. And then we're gonna get a little pin output on the screen right here. So in real life too, not in the simulation, you need voltage in, and then you need your ground. Everything has to have that. And then you have the capital letters, A, B, C, D, which correlate to the binary inputs into the circuit. And then you have the lowercase letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, which correlate to the seven segments on the seven segment display. Oh. And then you have these three little weird gates or weird inputs at the bottom. And basically these gates allow you to test to make sure all your LEDs work on the segment. So I think it's LT allows you to test all the lights. So if you don't want to test the lights, make it high. If you want to test to see if they all turn on, make it low. So in the circuit, that's why the, this, this, and this are high. So this is the LT one right here. We have to make it high so it can work. And then the other two allow you to add multiple digits to your output. So for this example, we only have digits zero through nine, but if you want to add zero to 99, you would need two displays. And this allows you to kind of sync them up. And if you're displaying the number nine, with two digits, you don't want to see a zero and a nine. You want the first digit to be off. So the other two inputs allow you to kind of train them up together to make leading zeros just off instead of on to make it look a little more presentable. But yep, that's pretty much basics of how the real life circuit works. Um, let's go back to the simulation.